Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, Ask Charlie Anything. Uh, today, the topic is about let's play in class. Okay, so today we have uh, one of our academic teacher, uh, teacher treating today uh, to share about uh, play in class. Okay, so before I start, let me quickly uh, introduce about uh, my story. Okay, and uh, these are our upcoming workshop. This Saturday, uh, we have a workshop by Dr. Masra, uh, our guest speaker. She's a lecturer as well as a, a vice president for a Cerebral Palsy Association, GAPS. Okay, she will be talking about Cerebral Palsy uh, and uh, what is Cerebral Palsy. She'll explain in uh, her workshop about it. Okay, and then our upcoming workshop uh, after Dr. Mastura will be uh, our OT, uh, supporting your child's fine motor skills, uh, Facebook Live. Okay, so about us, uh, in my story, uh, we provide services for academic delays, sensory delays, developmental delays, behavioral and emotional difficulties, as well as uh, physical delays. So our team consists of uh, academic support, behavior therapy, uh, clinical psychologists, counseling, occupational therapy, reading therapy, speech therapy. Okay. All right, so if you would like to contact us, uh, we provide free consultation. You can get our number and our email. Okay. All right, you can check us out on our Facebook page and we have a community uh, group uh, as well as LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, and our website. Okay, so today we're gonna talk about uh, play in uh, class. All right, teacher three thing. Uh, would you yep. like to introduce yourself? Uh, okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Tri Ting. I am uh, currently doing academic support uh, in my story, supporting our, our students for uh, academic. Um, um, what do you mean by supporting? Meaning um, uh, for their academic wise, okay, uh, we, what we are doing is uh, to prepare them to prepare our students, okay, academically, and also uh, their readiness uh, to be able to um, proceed to the classroom, to, to the real classroom setting. So this is what basically I am doing. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for the introduction. Did you think so? Okay. Today our topic is about play. Uh, I believe a lot of parents and uh, teachers out there, uh, as well as uh, other professional. Uh, talk about play uh, a lot of time, but to talk about play in class is not really something that we always uh, hear about. Okay, so uh, I have a few questions that I want to ask. Like I said, uh, not all the time we talk about play inside the class. Yes. So first, I would like to know, uh, what is uh, meaning, what is play actually? Like, how do you define play in terms of uh, in what you're doing? as a teacher, as an academic support? Okay, uh, so uh, let me define play. So play is uh, basically a self-chosen and self-directed uh, um, thingy by our children. Okay, they choose how to play. So without any pressure. So with pressure, meaning they're not playing. So from playing, all right, from playing, uh, what we do in class is we incorporate play together with the with our the academics the topics that we want to deliver together so that they can uh, learn through the play so uh, whereby they won't feel uh, pressured oh i have learned this for example i have to learn a b uh, a to z i have to learn how to write i have to learn spelling so what we do in class is we incorporate play. For example, we incorporate um, different uh, uh, Legos. Okay, Legos. Some of the children they like Legos. They like construction, uh, constructing Lego. So maybe we can ask them to uh, construct uh, different alphabets. So when they are doing something they are interested with, okay, they are doing doing something they like. Uh, so they are learning in a way. Ah, okay. Yeah. So meaning that uh, when you say that it's self-chosen, uh, meaning that they play based on what they like? Yes, it's actually intrinsically motivated. They, they choose based on what they like. 
So, um, for example, because uh, children, they are different. So, um, every children, they have their own interests. So, okay. what we are doing here in the classroom is we actually, we have to know, uh, uh, we, have to, we have to understand their interests, understand their strength, and based on their strength, we customize, sort of like customize the play and the learning together uh, to help okay. them play and right. also learn at the same time. Uh, okay. So basically, when you say incorporate into academic, it's like uh, specifically we're talking about uh, children with uh, special needs, right? Yeah. Okay. So you're in a class where uh, it has to be intrinsic motivated. So meaning that it has to, the motivation have to come from themselves. Yes, from so, the students themselves. Uh, okay. So when come to play, uh, they can choose what they like uh, it is self-directed, self-chosen. And then when you say incorporates, like you put in uh, academic, like yes. uh, what's in the class or what they normally do. So it's very different from uh, the traditional way of learning in class. Correct. Uh, I see. So basically, like you said, A to Z, you put uh, like a puzzle pieces and, you know, toys, Lego. So basically, when you want to teach uh, ABC, you... You do it in a way that uh, can interest them like a play. Through play, uh, they can learn about academic. Am I correct? Yes. So, uh, for example, okay. let me give you more example on, mm -hmm. okay, yes, for example, uh, Legos. Uh -huh. uh, some of the children, they like slime. They like mm -hmm. sand. They like, uh, some of the children, they like Play-Doh. So, actually, uh, for one topic, you can mm -hmm. actually use, uh, make use of different ingredients or different uh, materials to help mm. them in their learning. Mm. For example, they like, uh, okay, uh, you want them to learn spelling, so you can make, uh, make use of Play-Doh. If they like Play-Doh, you can make use of Play-Doh and ask them to do the spelling through Play-Doh. It doesn't ah. have to be writing. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So you're saying like, for them to learn uh, a specific like alphabet, you can use Play-Doh. So I assume that you shape the Play-Doh into the alphabet, am I correct? Correct, correct. Ah, okay, so to build the interest and then by playing with the Play-Doh, so they are also exposed to academic related like ABC. Yes. Ah, okay, so that's where when you explain in corporate, because uh, for me, I'm not a teacher. So when I hear about play and academic, I was like, uh, how, how, how do you have both? Like uh, for me, if I... As a counsellor, when I talk to children and parents, uh, for me, play is basically, it's very a uh, play. Like, you know, the traditional play, like, you know, you yes. just sit there with the toys uh, and play. But we are talking about specifically for children with special needs. Uh, so that's why um, some of the parents uh, sometimes do ask me, uh, like, uh, why do the teacher play during the class time? And then yes, all... actually, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so now I see that, uh, okay, from teacher point of view, like you, uh, you use play to build the interest as well as to introduce academic related, because we are talking about uh, children with special needs where sometimes it's really hard uh, to get their attention, am I correct? Correct, and In also sometimes of... it's really hard for, for them to have that interest, to mm. have the interest in studying or learning. Mm. So um, for us to get them... Uh, to have interest, to cultivate their in interest in study, we have to start off with something that they like, which ah. is play. Usually, ah. uh, children, they all like play. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right. So normally through play, you introduce uh, for them to build the interest. Okay. All right. Do you have any uh, experience that you have, you want to share with us? Today? Um, okay. Um, let me share with you. Uh, okay. Uh, Play doesn't have to be uh, to get uh, play doesn't have to be a, uh, you can play with young children, all right. Mm. Uh, you can even incorporate play for teenagers. Mm. That's all right. Interesting. So I have okay. a I, I have my uh, a student. Okay, he is uh, a teenagers, and then um, I am teaching him some strategies, some coping style. Okay, mm -hmm. to um, help him to cope with his academic. 
So uh, what is the coping style, for example, uh, time management, learning strategies, problem solving skills, all this. So for me to, for me to go into their, uh, to, to get them to uh, have interest on what I'm delivering, I, am, I, I, I actually have to go into their life and know what is their strength, mm. what is their interest. So teenagers, uh, they all like games, especially online games. When you uh, talk about uh, games with them, uh, they, will, they will open up and talk to you and share with you. Mm. So uh, what I'm doing with my children, my experience with them, uh, is actually I um, talk to them, their favorite character in the game. Ah. Okay. All right. I see, I see. The personality of the game uh, of the character in the games, and I relate the personality personality of the characters in the game to the learning strategies that I would like to deliver. Ah, okay. So it's like uh, sharing the same interests. Uh, so yes. through play, uh, they can basically open up to you, and then uh, traditional way of learning is. Teacher teach you something and then you have to learn whether you like it or not. So Correct. specifically now we are talking about children with special needs. So for them to have interest in what you teach, so you have to, you, you are using play uh, to get the interest from them. Okay. Yes. And then when you guys are talking in the same, the teacher and the student are talking in the same topic, uh, that's where you can gain their attention. Uh -huh. okay. Yes. I see, I see. So for those who join us today, if you have any question, feel free to put it in the comment box, okay, so that I can share to, to Chi Tui Ting and she can uh, share her experience as a teacher and how she uh, worked uh, using play and uh, using play to teach. Uh, it's a very interesting topic because for me, um, I'm not a teacher and uh, talking about play, for me, it's very traditional play. Like, you know, you just sit there, you know, like I share yes. um, the teacher treating like... Yeah. yeah, there are parents uh, who come to me and say, uh, teacher, my, my son or my daughter, uh, they don't know how to play. Mm. All right. Um, actually, in, in the class, okay, uh, I would say there are two groups I would like to share. There are two groups of students that I would like to share uh, today. Mm -hmm. So uh, the first group is uh, students that, uh, have not uh, that have not developed the skill to play. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to guide them to play and to learn? Because mm -hmm. for you to learn something, mm -hmm. you will need to learn how to play. Mm -hmm. When you play, you actually you are receiving information. Mm -hmm. So when you play, it's actually uh, when you play. All right. For example, uh, you get to know, you need to use a lot of words, you get to know new words, new vocabulary, mm. all right? And mm. even in the aspect of social and emotional, uh, emotional development of a child, uh, through play, you can actually know uh, whether your friend is uh, upset or happy. So you learn how to, uh, you learn how to notice social expression Okay, the spatial expression of your of your friends. Mm. So, uh, play is that important? But when if you don't have, uh, if you don't know how to play, it actually stops you from learning. Mm. All right. So a lot of uh, uh, parents they they come and tell teacher treating um my 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 son uh he doesn't know how to play. How to get him to engage into playing? Mm. So for you, for, for, for a student to, uh, a kid to engage in playing, uh, it has a certain steps. So what we used to do is to uh, maybe with a person that he is, uh, he trusts, okay, uh, a, a, a close, uh, maybe mother or, uh, or father, okay, with their supervision, okay, with their companies, okay, we ask uh, the, the kid to play, all right, with their company together with other people. Mm. So slowly from there, we generate the interest of play. All right, and then we guide them 
and then you will see okay they slowly they are slowly and gradually learning how to play a lot of parents they will say play play go go play with your friends go mm. play with your friends but they don't have the skill mm. so for uh, we have to give them the skill to play then only they will start learning mm. so this is the first group of uh, students that i would like to share so the second group is whereby uh, okay um, teacher my uh, kids um, all he knows is about play Mm. <laughs> they play a lot so how can he prof uh, how can he um, uh, learn from play so he plays a lot a lot all right so these uh, people all right this uh, this group of kids okay um, in the play mm -hmm. all right we get we put in a lot of structured we started to put in a lot of structure at the same time we allow rooms uh, for creativity for example mm -hmm. we give it we give them boundaries how to set boundaries we give them rules uh -huh. we give them time limit we give them okay for example if you want to play with this uh, in this area okay you cannot go out from the room okay only inside the room mm -hmm. all right and also uh, okay you can play with the toys that we have it here but uh, with condition, you you have to protect the toys and all that. All these are rules, uh, boundaries that we set for the uh, children. Otherwise, they will get uh, too excited, and sometimes you will see uh, unaccepted behavior starting to you will you will starting to see unaccepted behavior, which uh, they do not know uh, is actually wrong. They learn right or wrong through play also. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right. So basically, you are saying this, uh, from your experience, you have two groups of students and then one side is they have yet to develop uh, a play skill. Yes. Uh, and then the other group is where uh, they have the play skill, but they sort of like uh, they can further improve their play skill in terms of like uh, following rules. Rules, yes. Okay. All right. So I can see that when you share the first group, uh, sort of like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. uh, the first group I hear when you share is uh, through learning how to play, actually, it promotes quite a, a number of components. Okay? Yes. So from, my, from what I hear just now, it's not only that uh, it developed the interest towards academic, but it's so, sort of like you also say about uh, social emotional uh, skills. Uh, 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 um, academic. social, social yeah. emotional skill you mm. can develop a cognitive cognitive development you can improve a lot in their co cognitive development their mm. literacy their numeracy and also even their physical development through play All right yeah. so basically the first group can benefit from these few components when they learn through play uh, actually both groups Ah, so the yeah. second group is like further improve, enhance. Yes, we expand ah. from what they have learned, what uh, okay. the skill that they are they are having currently. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. we extend from that. Ah. For example, uh, for example, if they uh they can play, but they mm. don't know the boundary. Sometimes they will go out of boundary. Mm. So this is where where we uh put in some boundaries. We give them the rules. Okay, this one. Uh, okay, you can play, but with the condition, you have ah. to follow the rules. Okay. So this is where they learn how ah. to follow the rules. Ah, okay. So basically, uh, play, when you introduce play, it can promote skill area. Uh, and also, uh, some parents will ask, I assume that, or uh, why play is important. So from what you have uh, shared just now, a uh, play, is important in the way that it can help to promote developments of field area. Okay, yes. like you share uh, social emotional development, cognitive uh, numeracy. Okay, so uh, okay, so let's explore um, some of the component because I'm curious to know also, mm -hmm. like how exactly play can help in each of this uh, area of sure. development. Sure. Okay, because. Uh, like you shared. So, uh, and I also 
uh, read, came across that uh, through play, it can also uh, improve uh, physical development. Yes. So in terms of uh, physical de development, how, how does play can contribute? Okay, um, for example, when you play, um, uh, the easiest play, uh, hide and seek, mm. all right? Uh, when they're playing hide and seek, they run, they hide, they have to think, they have to think of a place that their friends cannot find them. Mm. So this is where they analyze. Mm -hmm. They started to think, they started to analyze. And when you play, maybe because uh, uh, when you play with friends, you get to communicate. Oh. All right, you get to communicate with your friends. Uh, and now we are, I'm going to hide here. So don't tell people. So when you are communicating with friends, that's where we, we are developing uh, the cognitive development, uh, okay. thinking, analyzing, communication, mm. physical play. So for the physical, when you start climbing, skipping, all these different spots, okay, they uh, categorize it under play. So ah. this is where you, this is where you uh, strengthen your physical development. Mm. Okay, so like, some of them uh, who uh, children uh, yeah. with special needs might not be active in certain way. So meaning that by true play, they can be active, which can right. contribute to their physical right. health. Uh, Let me um, share you an, exp uh, ex an experience of what are my students. Okay, mm -hmm. one of my students, they like, um, she likes to sit down, mm -hmm. all right? She doesn't like to move. Mm -hmm. She doesn't like to exercise at home, mm. all right? So uh, a lot of uh, his daily lives uh, um, is being, he, so it's sort of like uh, he, she is very dependent on the parents, mm. all right? On uh, uh, a lot of things, she needs help uh, in tying shoes, uh, wearing, his, wearing her own shoes and all that. So from play, if we make it interesting, all right, um, maybe uh, we started to incorporate tying shoelace in, his, in her play. For example, uh, maybe that hide and seek uh, game, all right, or treasure hunt game, all right. We can incorporate the tying shoelace component in the treasure hunt, all right. That's where she, she, has, she has to learn how to uh, sort of like uh, do the shoelace, mm -hmm. all right? So this is where she started to learn, mm. all right? If I want to play, if I want to participate in the play, all right, I will have to learn this skill. Otherwise, I will be losing. I cannot mm. win the game. Yeah. All right. Teacher Sri Ting, we have a question from uh, our one, one of the uh, participants. Yeah. I uh, say, not sure my teenage son doesn't like or doesn't know how to play. Yeah. Uh, he just like to watch Barney or Sesame Street YouTube on his iPad. So how can I teach him to be interested to play? Through apps or real play? For example, when I show him a toy car, he has, he has no, no reaction. Idea. He has sensory problem and physical limitations, so he can't jump or skip. Uh, exactly same case as what teacher is saying now. Would you okay. like to share some of your? So, uh, um, okay, let me make it. Uh, let me clarify something. Uh, mm -hmm. So your your kid, her his interest will be Barney and Sesame Street. Am I right? Mm. So this is yes. his strength. So maybe we can uh, remember what I shared before. Mm -hmm. So we can actually use uh, his or her strength to get him uh, to be interested on the thing, things that you would like to deliver. For example, for example, you would like to, uh, you would like to start uh, teaching him how to play. For example, uh, physical limitation, he can't jump or skip. Okay, for example, you would like you would like to uh, maybe set an objective. So through this play, okay, through this activity, your objective may, is maybe to get him to um, start skipping. 
all right? Maybe you can, uh, because he uh, likes Barney or Sesame Street, mm. maybe we can do some rhythmic, rhythmic dance, okay? Mm. By playing Barney song or Sesame Street song, okay? Playing this kind of song and start asking him to uh, move accordingly, uh, move according to the rhythm. So for uh, Jesse, for your case, um, for your son's case, uh, may I know how is his uh, how is his physical movement? Is he able to do? I think there's some physical limitation. All right. And sensory. Okay, so maybe uh, this is the part where uh, Jesse, you can uh, clarify what type of sensory uh, mm -hmm. and. Uh, physical limitation we can adapt. So basically, uh, teacher treating, correct me if I'm wrong. So basically, you suggest that uh, to introduce play, uh, because at this moment, this, this child uh, mm. has no reaction towards car. So what you suggest is uh, to find uh, things that he likes, which is uh, Barney and Sesame Street. And then from there, you have to draw out the objective. For example, maybe uh, you want to teach about ABC, so you put in Barney and uh, Sesame Street. Am I correct? Yes. Uh, the first thing that you have to do is draw out the objective. Mm. What do you want your son to learn? Mm -hmm. Okay, just uh, we, we, maybe we have to uh, do one step at a time. Draw mm -hmm. a small objective, okay, mm -hmm. of what are you aiming? So he needs support. Uh, Ah, okay. okay. All right. So in this case, what is uh, his strength on uh, movement? Maybe you, if he needs support to walk and stand, maybe you can start off with um, moving his hand. Okay. Don't um, make him stand and then uh, start dancing first. He, if he likes a bunny, so maybe you can play the bunny song, do some movement together with the car. Mm. So if your objective is to get him to get him to uh, learn how to play the car, uh. so maybe you can incorporate the car together with bunny things that he is interested uh, okay. with, things that he that he's, he likes. All right. So basically, uh, before that, by setting objective, from there we can see if he doesn't like or he doesn't know how to play because uh, at the moment at the moment he's very uh, okay he is uh, very attracted to his iPad yes okay just to add on uh, JC from what uh, teacher treating has shared uh, so basically she say that uh, we have to draw an objective uh, and then from what I can see is uh, he has his difficulty his limitation but uh, we can adjust uh, the objective based on his limitation. Okay, if now at the moment, if you would like to teach academic or, uh, or other, uh, for example, you want to remove him from his iPad, uh, then we can set that as an objective. Like, you know, uh, it can be real play or play to iPad, uh, whichever that you're comfortable with, I would suggest. Uh, and then, uh, the play can be a uh, real one, uh, which is like what teacher treating suggested. Uh, maybe a role play, perhaps, with yes. Sesame Street maybe and uh, Bunny. Actually, there's a lot of printable from uh, the internet that you can find uh, about Bunny. So maybe you can uh, uh, get that, print that out, those Bunny puppets, okay, and ask him to start uh, coloring, maybe mommy. Start, uh, start doing the coloring work together with uh, together with the kid, and then uh, when they when they finish the coloring, maybe we can make it into a puppet, and then mm. that's where we start doing the puppet role play. So ah. slowly to get uh, to get away from the iPad because ah. now his interest is solely on watching watching the videos from iPad. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So hopefully uh, we are able to answer uh, your question, uh, Jesse, because 
Um, <laughs> there's a lot of things we have to consider, uh, but thanks for asking. If you, if you feel like you need more, feel free to ask us. We are uh, teacher treating can share more about uh, uh, her experience in teaching through play. So, okay, so uh, from what we have discussed just now, physical development, so for example, uh, I've seen that play. I've also seen um, some therapists doing that, but I didn't know that you can, uh, like, like uh, OT, uh, uh, doing it through play uh, to introduce some exercise that make it very fun for them. But I didn't know that it can be uh, applicable in class as well. Okay. Uh, okay. No problem. No problem, JC. Feel free to ask us. Cannot hold the pen, but always holding his bunny puppet. Uh, okay. All right. So this is where, uh, like teacher treating suggested, uh, you can write down the objective of what you want uh, and then uh, incorporate uh, Barney and Sesame Street. And then, uh, because at the moment, you're not sure if he doesn't know how to play or he doesn't like. So by introducing uh, play, how to play, is it by modeling to them, teacher treating parents model to the child? You can, yes, you can. We, uh, we actually, we, we does that also mm -hmm. uh, in class because there's uh, different uh, stages of uh, play. Okay, mm. from um, from a kid, okay, from young, all right, they are one of this uh, stage, one of these stages of play is mm -hmm. uh, parallel play, mm. whereby, okay, whereby when parallel play, okay, uh, different kids, they are playing, okay, in the same, in the same room, but they are not playing with each other, they are not interacting with each other. But what in that in the same environment, okay, when they are playing their their toys, actually they start uh, with that in environment they start to observe. Uh -huh. They start to observe how other people play. Uh -huh. okay. So from there, okay, when they start to observe, all right, they will start to imitate. Mm. All right. When when we see them starting to imitate, I have I have students like this. They imitate their friends. Mm. He he or she actually imitates the friends on running, jumping. Mm. All right. Start. They started by imitating, mm. and slowly, okay, they know. Okay, from this, uh, when I see this situation, the similar situation, oh, that's where I, uh, start jumping, or mm. I start running. So when, uh, when they start imitating, it's a good thing mm, for them to okay. develop play. Ah, so basically, yeah. they are just modeling or imitating the other, yes. another person. Yes. So that's or, how you introduce play. Correct. Ah, okay. Or maybe you can, uh, parents, all right, parents, you can, uh, you can cooperate with each other. So mm -hmm. maybe daddy will... Uh, uh, will be the one who plays together with uh, the kid and mommy will stay behind the kid all right when daddy when daddy does something uh, an action so uh, mommy will stay behind the kids and start uh, guiding the kid to mm. model uh, okay yeah right okay thanks for sharing teacher treating so the next part I'm curious is you also talk about not only physical, it can help with physical development. Uh, now you talk about social and emotional development. How, how actually play can help in terms of like social and emotional development? Okay, uh, play actually does help, for example, self-regulation. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, if they win the game, they become too excited. Or maybe they, if they lose the game, they become disappointed because they mm -hmm. lose the game so from here all right we actually teach them how to cope with that uh, feeling ah, for example if you lose okay. in this game ah. all right if you lose the game all right um and teacher is there all right uh, in the class teacher is there to guide you to go through and how to cope with that feeling okay mm. i understand that you are upset and what are the strategy for you to cope with that feeling and started to regulate yourself and start focusing in the, the next activity? 
Ah. So in play, you actually learn how to self-regulate yourself. Ah, so basically, so through through play, some of them seems like uh, if they lose or they cannot control the emotion, like maybe they can get overexcited, uh, and maybe they can like are not happy, like you said, through So from there, you will guide them in terms of uh, how how to regulate. Uh, okay, yes. I see, I see, I see. So sometimes when in the class, when you introduce play to, to your students, uh, some of them will get very uh, excited or not happy. Yes. Ah, and in, okay. uh, in another case, all right. So for example, for students which has no confidence, mm. which has low confidence level in mm. playing, mm. Uh, they are sh too shy to talk to friends, mm. too shy to engage in play, all right from play when they uh, when they are able to uh, do something and to contribute something in that play it actually uh, cultivates their self-confidence uh, oh, i can actually do this i can actually do that with praising from teacher and also with encouragement from friends and teacher they slowly build up the self-confidence uh, also by Playing with another child, they learn about how to play together, meaning in, in terms of social development. Yes. Ah, yes. Okay. And also, it can help you, it can help the child to uh, develop self confidence. Correct. Ah, so, for okay. example, they are, they are many more, for example, they can mm -hmm. develop their um, empathy. Mm. Oh, right. empathy, yes. Yeah. Yes. They, they, they cannot, we should, uh, empathy is whereby they cannot understand all right for example oh, you lose in the game all right uh, um, maybe in the for example i'll give you uh, an example like a group okay a team uh, a, a team of members okay mm -hmm. for example if they won a game or they lose in a game all right they will start talking okay because of you uh, i we didn't do this and all that so for from this uh, situation, that's where teacher can step in uh, and guide them to think uh, in other way. All right, is it because uh, you 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 won the game? Why did you win the game? Mm. All right, what are your strengths? Okay, if you lose the game, what are your weaknesses? What can we do to improve better in the next mm. round? So these are actually uh, actually the steps for them to slowly, gradually learn mm. on how to uh, play and how to tackle and regulate themselves. Oh, okay. Yeah. Another, another social part that I noticed, uh, not only if children with special needs, mm -hmm. uh, but also other neurotypical children, uh, is like they have difficulty in sharing toys. So this can be addressed through play. Sure, sure, uh -huh. of course. Okay. Now, through play, uh, because we introduce turn taking, ah, okay, we introduce turn -taking, sharing. Yes. All right, where where uh, whereby in a group, okay, where everyone shares, the peer influence is there. Mm. When I see my friends sharing, okay, it gives me uh, it gives me a feeling that oh yeah, I have to share also. Because my friend or maybe my good friend, they are sharing. So slowly, they will develop the habit to share. Yeah, that's why uh, that is the reason why a lot of uh, people and a lot of parents nowadays, they uh, focus a lot of group play. Mm. They focus a lot on group play. This is for social part, right? Correct. Social, and, uh, social part. Okay, so taking turns sharing toys, uh, managing their behavior when they experience something that they don't like, empathy in a way that uh, they learn how to see another person's point of view or perspective. Yes. So this one all is, can be introduced or can be further developed uh, under play. Yes. All right. All right. Okay, so the next one is about, you talk about also cognitive, right? Just now. Where you said, yeah. you know, when, when they play hide and seek, it requires them to communicate. They need to analyze. They need to, like, you know, 
uh, I, I have to hide somewhere that uh, my friend cannot see me or I have to interact, you know, like uh, we have to find this person at hiding. So they start, how, how? So this is, like you said, it's part of the cognitive development. Would you like to share more about this? Okay, uh, through, uh, through this, all right, for their cognitive development, okay, uh, let me give you an example of Spoto game. Mm -hmm. Sorry, okay. what game? Uh, sporting game. Oh, meaning, okay. uh, for example, uh, 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 it, you can even play it in a car. Mm. So when mommy is driving a car, okay, with uh, uh, children behind, mm. to make them to make them uh, focus and don't do uh, to to make them engage, you can actually ask them to do some sporting game. Okay, uh, spot something green mm. or spot something blue. Okay, it actually um, it actually train them. All right, to actually uh, look and observe different things around them. So this is actually also a way to uh, in a way to focus on play, but at the mm. same time you are training their. You are training their observation skill. You are training that their uh, thinking skill or even ah. analyzing skill. Ah, okay. So this is all under cognitive development. Correct, correct. Ah. Also, one thing I notice uh, is, uh, you know, sometimes uh, uh, you want the child to like, you know, for example, uh, they have difficulty in terms of like play like you know a toy it's a hot item everyone want that toy yeah so this is where i think they will learn how to negotiate am i correct like, yes yes they, uh, they can they, they will learn how to negotiate or if they okay for example if i don't own the toy mm. okay this this toy owned by one of my friends mm. but i feel um I, I want that toy so badly. I want to play with that toy. Mm. But my friend is not uh, uh, not sharing. Mm. So they will start thinking and analyzing. They will start, oh, okay, maybe we can on organize some games. Mm. Okay, when we, when we are playing games, of course, my friends will start engaging. Mm. So when we are engaging, we can actually get the chance to share the, share the toy. Mm. For example, uh, that toy is a uh, nice Barney, let's say. Mm. Okay, but I don't own the toy. Maybe we can try something like the musical chair. Mm. When, when, when we start musical chair, okay, that's where uh, everyone gets the chance to hold the Barney puppet. Ah, okay. This is where they will start analyzing and think and organize. Oh, yeah, we can actually do this. Mm. We can actually negotiate. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So this is how they. Uh, this is how they actually. Uh, uh, um, how how we uh, get them to start thinking. Mm. Yeah. So basically, uh, play in terms of uh, helping cognitive development is uh, is by introducing or teaching them the ability to think, to understand, to communicate, uh, and then uh, uh, remember events. So those are the things that through play, which Correct. can further improve their cognitive yes. development. They even learn the sense of danger through play. Uh -huh. For example, if uh, they think of something which is unacceptable, mm -hmm. okay? We have the boundary. Remember, the first thing that we do is to set up a boundary. Oh. So if this, uh, if this idea, okay, mm -hmm. uh, came out, is dangerous, so and it is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. That's where they, that's where they learn. Okay, my idea of this doesn't work because it's dangerous. Mm. Okay. For example, they learn how to throw. Okay. They, they, they like uh, throwing. So, uh, yeah, balloon you can throw up to the ceiling. Balls you can throw up to the... Uh, you, you, sometimes you can uh, start throwing balls in the room. But when you throw too hard, it will hurt 
uh, it will it will uh, break something or maybe you will hurt other friends. Mm. That's where you start uh, knowing that oh okay if I throw too hard, okay uh, I, I will hurt my friends. Mm. If I throw too hard, I will break something. Okay, that's the sense of danger. Uh, right. Okay. Yeah. So, can you give an example how you do this in a classroom? Like, for example, a, a, a classroom where you do teaching. Mm -hmm. So, how how is play uh, important in terms of uh, helping the development of cognitive? Because we know that by playing you can think. But well, mm -hmm. I was thinking how actually you carry out inside a classroom. Okay. For example. Okay. Um. Let us do some, okay, if today I were to carry out a treasure hunt game with my friend, uh, with, my, with my kids in the, in the classroom, mm -hmm. okay, uh, my topic will be, my topic will be uh, healthy and unhealthy food. Mm. All right, okay. so they will have to think, okay, uh, my, uh, today, I want something healthy. Mm. I feel like eating something healthy. Please search for some healthy food. Mm. So that's where they start to think and to analyze and mm. to refresh oh. okay, the healthy food that I have learned before. So oh, that's where okay. I start searching. Oh, okay. Okay, when I start searching, oh, hmm, I forgot which one is, uh, for example, I see... Uh, I see a pizza mm. and uh, an ice cream, but he likes ice cream. He likes mm. pizza. He would think that, of course, he would think that that is a healthy food. <laughs> ah. <laughs> That's where he, he started to, hmm, is this a healthy food or unhealthy food? Ah, if, okay. he's not, if he's not sure, that's where he starts asking his friend. That's ah. where the communication part kicks in. Ah. Okay, so basically in a classroom, you teach about like categorizing, sorting. Yeah. So for you can, in a way that you make it into a play, like uh, let's sort or categorize healthy and healthy, uh, unhealthy food. And then I also remember you said a spotting game. Yes. So it can be like sorting, like uh, blue color. Correct. If, find you're, something if your blue topic color. It will be blue, all right. If your topic is uh, colors, you can, ah. you can ask them to uh, hunt for something blue, something green. So ah. if you're, it depends a lot on your ah, topic, okay. on so the it, topic that you are delivering. Ah, so for example, today your topic is about colors. So you introduce a game that related to colors, and then you you like sort of like ask them to sort what thing is sort the blue color one side killer. Ah, so it's not like a textbook thing. Correct. <laughs> So uh, for example, I was... if I would mm. like my uh, my children to learn about mm -hmm. um, stationery, mm. I would like my ch uh, child to sort, okay, paper clips, erasers, rulers, uh. and all this. So, mm. but these are the things that these are the objects that I have uh, taught before in the uh, class. So okay. I will give them every, all a bunch of stationery for them. Okay, you sort out, uh. and then even from here, I can. Uh, Extend it to mathematics. Ah. So now I have three paper clips. All right. But I need 10 paper clips. How many more paper clips do I need to get? Ah. That's where he started to think. He starts to think and analyze. Oh, okay. I have to do. He starts, he starts to apply his mathematics um, skill. Ah, so like, ah, okay. So it's something like uh, today, uh, teacher going to teach about uh, preposition on mm -hmm. under or size yes. uh, taller bigger smaller so all these normally from my experience uh, is I learned through uh, you know the traditional paper exercise I have to circle or oh, this one is smaller this one is bigger but yeah. for in particular sometimes uh, we when we deal with children with special needs teachers have to come up something so for you is uh, you you introduce play where, uh, for example, uh, when you talk about uh, when you talk about bigger, taller, you can just put item, right? Or like Correct. just now you said, you can even uh, talk about English, and then after English, you can move to mathematics, uh, like yes. the pepper clip situation. Ah, okay, yes. now it makes sense. 
Now I'm because we because... are applying what we do, what we learn, all right, from English, from mathematics, mm. from geographic, history, mm. all this, all the subjects, we are actually applying it in the real life. Mm. So by using play, when you apply it in the real life, that's where they start thinking and they start to learn. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because I was thinking, like, I'm not a teacher. <laughs> so I was thinking, okay, but to me, it's still like, how do you, but how do you play inside a classroom, like uh, thinking and analyzing? So uh, thanks for sharing because now I have a clearer understanding, like, uh, how that's how teacher can introduce uh, 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 or incorporate a play into uh, the teaching objective today. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, another part you talk about numeracy. So numeracy, I believe, is like uh, literacy and numeracy. Yes, literacy okay. is all about reading and writing, and mm. numeracy is about numbers. So uh, like what I've shared just now, we can actually, uh, for numeracy, uh, we can actually uh, um, incorporate play uh, in like mathematics, mm. uh, numbers and all that in their, uh, these, are what, these are the topics that we would like to deliver. Mm. So this is how we make use of the materials that we have, mm -hmm. okay, uh, make use of the materials and to at the same time to uh, make a connection ah. incorporate that in it okay all right yeah. so let's say uh, i have a child mm -hmm. uh, in the process of learning how to read mm -hmm. how how do i make it fun because uh, my experience of uh, learning of reading is like teacher just give me and just teach me how to read the sound and then and that's how I learn. Okay, uh, <laughs> we have to go back, okay, to support them, we have to go back to their strength. Uh -huh. All right. Okay. Um, anyway, all right. Uh, anyway, we have to find what is their interest for mm. them to learn how to read or write. Okay, mm -hmm. of course, they will, they will surely learn something, but using, the, by applying and using the interest that they the things that they like they can it speed up their sort of like speed up their learning process mm. so for example okay if my child uh likes to uh likes doodling mm. okay and he or she is uh, learning how to read or write mm. okay we can actually uh turn the whole story that we want them to read okay into uh, doodling mm. all right i have a I, I have a case all right i have a kid he likes to draw mm. all right but he doesn't like to read mm. or even writing mm. he uh, likes to uh, likes to do something or, or but he likes to create story mm -hmm. okay out of his uh, imagination oh, okay. that's where we started to okay uh, what is your favorite character? What do you? What would you like to draw today? Mm. Okay. Uh, for example, he draws a bear. So uh, we want him to learn how to incorporate. We want him to uh, start reading the book that we want. Mm -hmm. The first step is to relate the bear to the story that we want him to mm. learn. But I can tell you, this is a process. Uh, this process doesn't take one or two days. Oh. Okay, this is a step-by-step uh, -step process, slowly, uh, uh, first, okay, we started with the, um, the character that he likes, and then started to put in some element from the, from the story, okay, for example, uh, the bear, the story is about, uh, the story is about the boy, all right, the boy, uh, uh okay uh let me give you a, a nice story it's, the story is about um the boy the three little pigs oh three little pigs okay, okay the three little pigs all right so how does this bear uh relate it with the three little pigs mm -hmm. 
Okay, we want him to, okay, for example, the, ball, the bear is uh, going through, uh, uh, is walking in the jungle. So the bear is walking in the jungle. The first thing he sees, oh, he sees uh, the first pig. So that's where we started to incorporate the story that we want him to read to the favorite character that he ah, likes. Okay. And slowly, we bring him through uh, and go into the story that we want. Uh -huh. is, it, uh, is it too abstract? Uh, not. Okay. For example, okay, uh, there's three little pigs. The first little pig uh, came and uh, started to, <laughs> started okay. to uh, build their house. Okay, uh -huh. that's where we bring the bear that he, uh, he, he drew, uh -huh. okay, and go into uh, building the house together with the first little pig. Ah, where okay, okay. to know the content of the, the content of the story already. Ah, Just okay. That, uh, it goes a little bit out of the, out of the topic because the bear is there. Ah, so basically, you, you replace the character inside. Uh, and then slowly introduce. Sort of, yes, sort us. of like uh, not replace, but we add on uh, one extra character. Mm. Okay, and slowly get him into that story. Ah, so basically, okay, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm going to yeah. use the situation that a, a parent shared just now. So basically, mm -hmm. um, uh, basically, I have now is uh, Barney. Let's say this child is very. Uh, attracted to Barney, mm -hmm. and then today the reading is about three little pigs. Mm -hmm. So basically, I teachers try to uh, introduce Barney uh, into uh, the into three the li into three, the three, three little, little pig story. story. Ah, yes. Yes. So ah, the okay. Barney character is now in the three little pig story, and because he likes the bunny, he is together with the bunny in the story. And now he started to learn, okay, how, how does the stories go? Ah, otherwise, okay. uh, otherwise, the three little, story, uh, three little pig stories is just a story for them. It doesn't connect with them. Ah, okay, understood. Yeah. Now our objective is to connect, with, uh, connect the story together with their, uh, their, their favorite toy to ah. make it, to, uh, to, to get, let them know, oh, okay, let them have the interest. Oh, okay, uh, this is the first story. Uh, and then the, the next one, the, the, what is the next step after the first uh, pig? And then now we are, are, are the bunny and the first pig sees the second pig. So this is where uh, they learn. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Teacher Treating. Uh, oh, we are already at the end of our uh, Facebook Live. Uh, thank you for sharing your uh, experience and uh, talk about uh, play in class uh, because um, I'm not a teacher and I learned a lot uh, from you in a way that uh, how play can be introduced in the classroom in terms of to promote learning. Okay, and there's five components that you talk about that can improve. Uh, for example, social, emotional. Uh, yes, literacy and literacy, numeracy, cognitive, cognitive, physical. Ah, okay. All right. So, to those who have joined our Facebook Live, if you have any question that we cannot address now, you can still put in the comment uh, and then we can ask from uh, teacher treating and she can share uh, through the comments. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you for uh, spending an afternoon uh, no and share your experience about uh, play. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. I'll see you on the next uh, Ask Changi Anything, as well as the following workshop this week uh, until the end of the month. We have few coming. Check out our Facebook page. You can see our upcoming workshops. All right. Thank you so much, teacher tweeting. You're Stay welcome. safe. Thank bye you. Bye. Stay safe. Bye-bye.